Prophet, exactly how yeah. we saw uh, was it was Cloud9 Cloud actually Nine versus Navi, Navi yeah. where they just ganked Dendi over and over again. Yeah. But besides that, there's nothing. She's just gonna spam, you know, and push the wave. So she's gonna get what she needs. The thing is that even if you can't stop her, you can actually go with a hero that can also trade farm and do effectively. Um, Heroes like TA, like Dragon Knight, that will be able Ten to sustain and stay there in the lane. If the Death Prophet um, just stays there and trades farm, well, it's good for you because those heroes come online early and they can uh, take towers or take supports fast and maybe even do Roche in the other game. Right now, the bands are very uh, similar to what we saw yesterday. The Pugna band, the Visage band. It's the only band that's different is the Laundry. Mm -hmm. uh, and it makes sense when you see the yeah. team fight for Vichy Gaming. If you add pushing forward to that, it's actually super scary to deal with. Them. And the Doom doesn't do much to a Laundry. No, similar to a Death Prophet. So and it's quite a big counter. So it's Kyra, it's the same. They, they can't take down the Laundry. He's too tanky. And I mean, it's gonna be Vichy Gaming again, pressuring Cloud9. That's that's for sure. Uh, yesterday, Cloud9 has no had no output potential at all so they was they, they were forced to take fights versus tanking whistleback doombringer which is not something you always want dazzle etc so maybe this time around they're like we need some out pushing potential or then they or they have a, another plan AUI just said they had a plan so let's see what's the plan yeah. oh well final band's gonna come in for the second round and it's gonna be the ember spirit targeted at sing sing and you saw also that the visage as well targeted at the combo that cloud nine can run and we're going back to the picks and VG Gaming off the back of their first two. Where would you like to see them go? It's going to be complicated for them because they can always keep going for the team fight, which is what VG Games, VG Gaming does really well. And the Jack Hero, the one and seven Jack Hero in this tournament, not a hero that's doing particularly great, but if pushing is what you want to do, Jack Hero can create a lot of space for you. The damage he can do with the macro pile, with the dual breath, and of course the liquid fire on the towers make sure that taking them down is so easy. I mean, this is the VG game we saw game after game after game during the group stage, especially. They were winning games in 10, 15, 20 minutes at the shortest match time, push after push, and they, especially on the Dire side. They love being on that Dire side. This is the second game in a row against Cloud9 where they can Five be on Dire, and remaining. defending towers is going to be tricky for Cloud9. The Jakira also is great at taking early Roches with the Liquid Fire, and I think Cloud9 is going to be under a lot of pressure. Ooh. They're going back for it. Yeah. My worry with this is it worked, it worked so well against Na'Vi because Na'Vi weren't ready for it. They didn't expect Dendi to be ganked so many times and get completely shut down. VG Gaming, if they've seen that game, they'll know they need to protect the Death Prophet mid. I don't think we'll see Death Prophet die two, three times in the first ten minutes of the game. But it's also the fact that when you get a Bounty Hunter, the potential chance of winning your offlane is increased just from yeah. the Bounty Hunter being there. And if your offlane is doing really ten well, your safe lane should be doing well, and Sing Sing mid will probably trade far, Five you could have three calls that when it comes so the actually you know fights under the tower that are actually all going to be pretty much Reserve healthy time. online and doing something because when this turns up like okay Jakiro is very strong at pushing towers but if you miss ice paths and if you you know don't get things going in, in your way because you at the moment they only have a ravage to kind of back up like in terms of keeping people in place you can take advantage of Vici gaming if you can break them but you know you, if your calls do well that's a potential that you can fight really 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 strong but if it doesn't go well you're you kind of feel like a 4v5 team where Banty Hunter does doesn't assist under the towers by any means. My big concern for Cloud9 right now is that they really lack damage. I mean, sure they have the Kairos burst damage, but besides that they have nothing. Early on, the Doom is not going to deal damage and in the first fight, but when he's going to have mech, mana boots, or just the Midas, it's not going to deal. And Vichy Gaming is going to be looking to push really early with that kind of line. But they don't even need the mech, they just need to go. And Cloud9 is really lacking damage. and. It's going to be impossible for them to actually initiate well on PG Gaming because if it's if it's not for the tide, then it's going to be the Shaker fissuring you. If it's not the Shaker, it's going to be the Ice Pass. It's going to be really hard to actually get to that Death Prophet if they want to take her down. So I'm not sure about this. Like PG Gaming is going to be looking to push, and so far Cloud9 Five has no answer remain. besides crushing the lanes and crushing the game. But that's what the Earth Shaker picks really smart. Like you want to protect your lanes exactly. to prevent the Bounty Hunter doing his thing. Earth Shaker sit behind mid, protect the Death Prophet. Your exactly. safe lane, like sure, the Bone Seven's going to get some farm, but Bone Seven getting farm isn't a big problem as long as they're not getting kills and shutting down your Death Prophet. Yeah, but the only problem is that Bone Seven is one of the most aggressive players. Yeah. 
he's insanely yeah. good on the clockworks. And the THD, I don't see any combo right now, THD plus X, yeah. uh, pushing back a clockwork. So he's gonna get good farm, good levels, and he might crush the game exactly like we saw him do versus Navi, because Fisher is good to counter initiate mid, but if, the, if it's a hook, he's gonna get a kill regardless of the Fisher. That is the thing, uh, the clockwork remain. is this tool that... Going back to TA3, was the counter to the Magnus. Remember, it was all about the Magnus getting those initiation, those RPs. You suddenly got the clockwork there, and he would stop the Magnus from initiating. This time, different story, but same hero. It's not about stopping the initiation. It's all about just getting to the hero that's going to be so protected. And once you get the clockwork 1v1 with the Prophet, then everyone has to go and run and try to protect the open space for the Doom to get there, for the Bounty Hunter to start tracking people, and then for the Skyrath Mage to uh, Mystic Flare, the people that are inside the cogs. Yeah, definitely. And there's also, when Ten you're a VG Gaming, me. you now have to think about, okay, if we're going anywhere into the mid game or after our tier ones if we're trading okay we're going to need a four staff because anybody who gets caught by that clockwork if he's doing well and that's the only reason it would be going bad in the mid game if the clockwork does well you want to be able to four staff out of the cogs to save what are your very important heroes like the death prophet so we'll see how burn seven is going to be able to handle that and we saw sing sing talking a lot in the booth there probably Five seconds giving remaining. suggestions on what he wants to play mid vg gaming going to remove the alchemist Cloud9 with their final ban. Yeah, yeah. Needs to remove they needed a Sila here. The Prophet, Prophet ban, I'm sure Clockwork's pretty good against the Prophet, but if, if you don't get the early kills, if you don't do really well in the lane, then that's where Prophet can be an absolute beast. So Vici Gaming, you're gonna probably need to look for something else for Sila, unless they're gonna go really gimmicky and run like a farming Jakiro. Why not like a Morphling or something? Yeah. In my opinion, the best option for Vici Gaming right now is to run a THD core and get another strong support because, okay, they're gonna get a Luna. But that's actually good because it's... I think one of the best picks to get versus the clockwork, you know, because of the Luna Aura H he's gonna be able to zone out the clockwork quite okay. He's gonna get XP, but he's not gonna get farmed because if he goes to the creep, that's just too much physical damage. Yeah, and I'm not too concerned right now if I was Cloud9 because VG Gaming, yes, they have a deadly push. But if you go back to the roots, the early, early periods when they were speed gaming, or even before when they were Kaipi, they were very known for just losing all their tier two towers and turtling really, really well, extending that game 50 minutes remain. long and then taking the game out of a mistake from the enemy. But they don't have the best late game right now, as they used to worry. Like, One hero could change that. It could, it could. They, well, it's going to be a Sing Sing here, most likely, and that's where, like, Bounty Hunter is not a late game hero. Skyrath Mage falls yeah. off against BKBs. Brewmaster was really good, but because of the Death Prophet, he's not anymore. Yeah, I, I can't see a Sing Sing hero that would work. Maybe they want to be looking at Indian Walker to get some burst damage. I think Brewmaster will still be okay. You're only up against one Silence. You know, if it was, if you had, if they let through the Nature's Prophet and you potentially had Sila with the Orchid as well, it would be a nightmare, but definitely very playable um, for Sing Sing. But yeah. what do you think of, like, would a TA? be a bad choice. Yeah. And, yeah, I think TA is a bad choice because of the Death Prophet and THD she's just going to melt. Yeah. Even yeah. something like a Kunker, you need some damage, yeah. you need some team fight. I like Sing Sing's solo mid Kunker is... Yeah, that's a good call. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. So Meepo. Oh. They're going to bring it back. Oh. That's Meepo! A, that's a Meepo versus full AoE lineup. Yes. Like, from really full, five hero AoE. They're not going to be Team they're going to be playing keep away, avoid team fights, split push, like creep skipping waves, just trying to stall the push with this Meepo thing. Yeah, it, it might work, but yeah, because VG has no, not believe, much. Sam, believe, Sam, yeah, believe. Yeah, I think, I believe in Sing Sing actually, but I'm just scared of that fairing or shaker. If he gets a dagger fast, then Sing Sing's in trouble. If he doesn't, I think Kalanai has a good job. All right, well, uh, Seb's not entirely convinced or at least worried for the final pick here for Cloud9. And we'll see if it works out for him, because if they lose this, they are out of the tournament. If they win, they can tie it up to a 1-1 scoreline and then have another shot of moving on to the next round. All the players are now loading in, so let's get this match on the way. It's game two. We'll send it over to our commentators. Thank you very much. Oh, welcome everybody here to the Key Arena on this wonderful Sunday morning. I'm Toby One, joined by Lumi. And man, for everyone out there that believed in Dota 2, belief has been rewarded. We have ourselves a Meepo here on the main stage played up by Sing Sing. Uh, we had him playing Meepo in multiple games in the group stage. We had him played it in different tournaments, but doing it in the main stage, facing elimination. If they lose this match, Cloud9 is going home with 650,000, a big chunk of money, but really a lot less than what they really want to come here and get. 
and they have the confidence to run one of those heroes that we don't really see in competitive play anymore. How greedy is it though? Like, you, you think about the lineup of VG Gaming. VG Gaming, you've put Echo Slam on this one, you throw Ravages with Anchor Smashes, you got Lunas Glaze bouncing around, obviously it's great to soak up for Eclipse, but then you've got like your, your ultimate coming out from Jakiro, you've got everything coming out from VG Gaming. They've got so much AoE up against this, this Meepo, I'm wondering if Sing Sing can get enough fun that he can survive through it all. 30 I think you're absolutely right. Bottom. I think once it gets to the stage where Meepo is forced to face tank all of the spells, the game is essentially over. What Cloud9 is looking to do is what they did against Navi in that game 3. Just beat them 10 minutes in. Because once this game drags on, I don't think Meepo as a core is alone to outcarry everything Vichy's got. But what Meepo does bring to the table is a ton of burst damage. Combining him and Mystic Flare, you could have an easy way of removing Death Prophet and Luna before she get her BKB. The so begins. I think the, the, the focus on Cloud9 is to win the lane, just snowball completely out of control. Whereas VG Gaming, they're playing their standard game. Get their ultimate to six and start death balling and pushing for towers and towers and towers. <laughs> Man, I, I'm actually wondering too, like in very, very late game, what have you really got for VG Gaming to sort of split push of Meepo? Like, were you going jumping, jumping a Crob or a Luna around the map to try I and do that? I think a Blink Earthshaker could definitely set things up but we're very far away from that point, yeah. so... Yeah, let, let's, let's focus on our early game. So as far as lanes go, we have uh, Super as the Death Prophet going up against Sing Sing's Meepo. As we would have expected, Pylai Dai is here on the off lane. They ran this exact combination going up against Na'Vi, where they have Bone Seven as a Clockwork, and Pylai making the uh, supporting plays here. The major difference is the fact that one Pylai is already down at one third of his life points up against FY, and FY is still walking around with the Sentry Wards. But he didn't go dual breath, he went for his Liquid Fire to start with, also in towards the middle lane, Fenrir is making a rotation. Throws the fissure, but Sing Sing's on the wrong side of it. So we can't lock him in there with Super. But yeah, what happened really well on this top lane was the fact that he managed to zone out Nature's Prophet during that game yesterday. But he's not going to have as much luck because you don't have VG Gaming trying to, trying to run an offensive trial lane. Yeah, the difference is he is allowing Bone 7 to get a ton of experience. So Offlane Bone 7 already at level 2 at this point, so he should be able to assist with Rocket Flares once he hits level 4, I imagine. Oh, they're thinking about Fenrir. Look at Bone 7. He's actually got really high movement speed up against that Earthshaker. Just a simple lead. If you can get that Bounty Hunter up to level 2 and have a Chinata attack, then you've got a lot more potential for kill power. Yeah, that is always a problem when you're running a roaming Bounty Hunter, is how do you find that level 2? You could do it by leeching, you could do it by maybe backstabbing mid, and it looks like Pilot Eye has that He's in mind. He's looking for the Courier. He's waiting for the Courier to come out with the bottle for middle lane. Because Super, actually, funnily enough, Super CS, even though it's 8 for 1, he's still not ready to pick up the bottle. Yeah, normally if you're playing this particular style, as you see the mid hero, you look at what item she's got. If you see her that she's got a full no talisman, you know she's not rushing for the bottle. Mm -hmm. So you could hang out on the top lane for a little bit. But if you see she is rushing for the bottle, you, you make you make that headway to mid. But the courier as we speak is coming out, so I like die, he needs I believe two hits to get that courier kill. Yeah, he'll he'll need two. I don't he'll think he'll get off too though, because Finro's in here and he he's ready to fissure away. Ah, uh, VG Gaming are very much aware of what could possibly go wrong. Is Finro actually gonna... I'm gonna laugh if the Earthshaker is now becoming... He is. He's actually becoming the Courier for the bottle. At the meantime, on bottom lane, ROTK is forced completely back on insanely, insanely low life. But Pilot is getting nothing with Fenrir doing the job here from Super. Yeah, as the analyst pointed out, like this strategy has been ran so many times. Look at the Sentry Wards on the mid and top. That's where Pilot Dai spent most of his time ganking it. The fact that there's sentries down, he, he can't do anything. And essentially, you have a glorified melee creep that's running around and not doing anything. See, at the same time, these Sentry Wards were here for the last game. These, the, uh, for the last game, for the Na'Vi game, except they're a little bit further up. So on the middle lane area, it was actually a little bit further down here on the ramp. That's where they threw the ward out. But then having a little bit higher on the ground means you can see when he rotates out the jungle just that little bit sooner. And up on the top lane, the ward was actually up in this little box right here, which means where Silas currently farming had more vision. But because they plant the ward a little bit further down, they're trying to actually keep the lane forced out a little bit more. Now Pardai, yeah, he's going to realize that he's being watched because Super is now back at the tower for no real appropriate reason, but with support coming in from Eternal Envy, okay, um, he, he has nothing to really stop down. He sees the Courier, but he's just beating inside of Super and just trying to force him off the lane. This is just space being created, and they're sacrificing some other things. We should have also flagged here that ROTK came down here with an absolute ton full of regen. Uh, even after, like, two minutes, he still had 10 Tango charges down here on the Tidehunter. 
That was a very interesting rotation from Cloud9 because you pull your safe lane carry to mid and you're not really exactly ganking successfully. So, meanwhile, I know Aoi 2000, he, he is getting a little bit of experience, but the trade is perhaps not worth it. He finds a haste ring though, and it looks like he's going to go back on the bottom. Yeah. Meanwhile, Vichy Gaming, I think their game plan is progressing absolutely according to plan. You pick the Shaker, you protect your lanes, the Central Wars are doing an excellent job, like you mentioned. And all you really want is those level sixes, so I think Vichy Game. VG Gaming is doing exactly what they want out of the draft, and so far it's it's up to Cloud9 to execute. See, I'm not sure this will be enough though. Look, look at the way they're jumping right now. I'm seeing double stacks, I'm seeing MV farm up one, I'm seeing Sing Sing actually farm up his own stack as well. He's cracked level six already. This is what's gonna happen, okay? You wanna protect your lanes. I can completely understand that one. But what happens when you let a Meepo free farm? To a point. Like he's free farming up the jungle, and you know he's gonna burst farm as well with levels. You got Bone Seven who's up at level five up on the top lane before we're even five minutes in. Pile eye shot, he's got no experience, but the Earthshaker, he's only about to crack level two. He's got very little to boot as well. Takiro, hey yeah, sure he's level four, but you've still got a Meepo who's gonna completely out level everybody. And all it's gonna take is one good hook shot, as well as one nice combination with a mystic flare, and you got yourself a nice kill. I think you hit it on the head in terms well, we might see an engagement up top as Pilot died. It looks like they're gonna see a little bit of gold. We're probably not gonna die that time. He couldn't get close enough for the power cogs, and without uh, without having the power cogs out of range of the tower, or at least a, a way to trap a hero out of side of range of the tower, it's just not worth going for. Yeah, I think Meepo Free Farm is a thing, but it's not a thing that could actually stop a push. And that's really the word Vichy Gaming will excel. They're gonna just storm down mid and Unless Meepo have Blink Dagger and Agatham set coming bottom lane, Envy, he's gonna loop himself around the tree line and find Fenrir just sitting here on the bottom lane. He's coming down here for Arcane Boost, he's not coming down he here no for mana. anything else. Yeah, he's not gonna get the kill, he really will need Doom to make that kill happen. He's, he can cut his way out of that one. He's okay. It's very interesting that they're giving Aoi so much mana, or so much experience, excuse me. And I think that they're really recognizing the fact they need early game burst damage. If you look at the experience, Aoi has more experience than Eternal Envy, which is not exactly a common sight for someone to have more than a carry, but another rotation is going to come down to mid lane. And again, Pilai Dai, he is at level 2. And once that push comes, sure, you have a very farmed people, but you also have a very under-farmed Bounty Hunter. You have a Skyrath that can hold a push. I think I think Vichy Gaming is very happy with the exchange you're getting Dyer's right now. Middle tower Super's about to force the bottom lane. As TP's coming back towards the middle lane, at the same time, Meepo knows he can gank up whoever he wants to until he gets close to Meepo's liquid fight. And then he has to back up a little bit further. But Super is, in fact, now moving into the Radiant. I think he's just... He's just he's on the Oh, Rara DK! There's the Ravage on the bottom lane for the Fisher as well, Envy, he's too low on life! He does go down! Try to put the Thunder Club to give himself a little bit more space. I like that coming in from the backside. He's gonna try to pick him up, but he's only got a level 1 Shuriken Toss. Not exactly not enough. a ton of damage. He will have another Shadow Walk if he wants to go for it. Breaks out, Shuriken. <laughs> he doesn't have enough mana. Oh, Fable though. Oh, that's Fable's gonna to get the it. kill, but it looks like Aoi's gonna lose his life as well. Highlight that, he's looking for mana. He's trying to juke himself out of there. He's got no more tango, he needs 10 more mana. And that's yet another free kill. Remember the mantra of Cloud9 coming into this game is win the lanes and then just snowball, but it's Vichy Gaming that's taking the control of the early game. Yeah, that it is, and this is this is not what uh, C91 have happened. Now you end up having like Doombringer, who's got one death to his name. He's got obviously going to have to devour his way back up again, but because he doesn't have high levels yet, we don't have this high e easy devourer, and they're actually switching almost Aoi into a core role. He just cracked his level 6, so Radiant's the Nukage is on the bottom lane of Vichy Gaming attack. might have to be a little bit more respective of this now, especially considering that Ravage is down for a while. Yeah, looks like uh, it, it, I think the comeback is going to happen from Bone 7. He's picked up a smoke for himself. He's now smoking himself top, but they really need maybe Aoi to TP in to, to relay that burst damage, which his teleport scroll is on cooldown. So I'm not exactly sure what the game plan is for Bone 7. I mean, Bone 7 and Derry could hook in against Silar, but that Eclipse is going to shred him before he kills Silar. Mid lane push is coming. Sing Sing is just Radiant's continuously farming up inside the jungle with the crop ulti going off. Exorcism's gonna help to bring down this tier 1 town. But fortification is still available, and there is a creep wave here as well. They put an observer ward uh, C9 on the dire side of the river, so they're able to know exactly how many Radiant people see uh, VG Gaming have here and where they are. And there goes fortification. So they commit four heroes VG Gaming. They pop the Exorcism, as well as the DD Rune, the Death Prophet. They haven't brought down the T1 Tower, and Silas farming up on top lane. So, who's really getting the better trade-off here? Maybe not for long, the clock will oh, go. Oh, no. Keep my Silas has it. He's, 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 he's
He's still got him. He's still got him. But the battery assault is more than enough damage. Silo will go down. Pilot Dive was getting right up in front of him as well. And that's much needed levels. Pilot Eye is now almost level 5. Bone 7, a very uncharacteristic. After his, like, flawless block play the other day, that was an uncharacteristically missed hook. But they still get the kill. Yeah, Clockwork is going to be a key hero for Cloud9. He needs to get back, or at least get some sort of mana, because the push on the mid lane is going to come soon. It's really up to him to initiate for the team. Meanwhile, for the rest of Cloud9, well, they, they just keep on farming. But I think if you're VG Gaming, even though you just lost your core Luna, you're completely happy with how the game state is going right now. And Silar, yeah, he's joining the push. Here comes that death ball, and I don't think Cloud9 has what it takes to defend. Meepo's going to let loose the nets, but look at how easy it is for VG Gaming to drive everybody back. They just Radiance have superior Middle Tower. Is under Radiance they Middle do, Tower for now. has fallen. But now, I'm still watching that Meepo very, very closely. Dyer's top with strength tower treads is up, he's walking attack. around with an Ogre Club as well. You know, it's just some extra life points for now, but once he has the Aghanim Scepter upgrade, Radiance bottom then we're going to be seeing a attack. lot more Meepo and a lot tankier Meepo. And that's why I don't know if Super's really got enough damage to actually get through all of the Meepos. This is, this is still for me, like, he, he's the wild card of, of Cloud9. If Meepo continues to gain farm, if Meepo has continued to give space, he is going to walk over this VG gaming lineup because he's going to come with burst damage. Meanwhile, up on top like Clockwork, and we're going to pick up on the Luna. ROTK looking for a little bit of revenge here. Clockwork that time was a hook shot to connect, and they had to bring extra support. Out and up towards the top lane, and ROTK commits to Ravage. But now Super, not the greatest position for him. Still on point seven. The fish will actually connect on him. He's walking away, and Super getting nuked down by Owie. Seven will take a fall, but it's the Meepo who actually gets the kill over on the Death Prophet. This is exactly what Cloud9 wants to happen, and Vichy does not. Attack. They don't want to be trading kills here and there. They want to be trading, well, not trading, they just want to be taking towers. And in fact, it's, it's Cloud9 that's actually taking a tier 1 bottom, forcing a TP. That's going to be Silar teleporting in. They're this is, this is, this is dangerous, man. Yeah, yeah. He's got Doom up and running, and Bounty Hunter's right behind him. So the extra TP comes in from FY, and now Pilot Eye affects Sentry Wars straight away from FY. He's making sure he knows exactly where this bounty is, and Bounty's already rotated off. They're yeah. looking towards ROTK, Mr. No Ravage in the middle lane. Meanwhile, it looks like uh, Pilot Eye did put a Sentry Ward in the engine. It's pretty key. Middle lane, there's already Earthbind going on ROTK. Is there more damage? Secondary Earthbind, but the poop's a little bit too far away from the 1,000 life point hero, as Pilot Eye Die is just stalking FY as well as Super. As a second, no, he's, he's camping next to his own sentry ward. And Bone 7, well, the smoke's gonna break if he moves any closer, but he's looking for a hook shot moment. Comes up high ground, that's just the same time Jakiro has backed up. They're checking all the jungle camps. Now, if they walk themselves Radiant's a little bit further up towards the mid lane, attack. they'll see Fenrir. So it's Bone Seven's choice, but it'll be a very unwise choice to hook shot into a four man smoke of Vichy Gaming. Well, Vichy also oh, spoke up, and looks go. like their target's gonna be Eternal Envy on the bottom lane. Quickly checking on the teleport scrolls on Cloud9. They don't really have any. Cl Clockwork's got one, but if Clockwork TPs into assist Eternal Envy, it's gonna be a double kill going towards Vichy. That's how they get it. Envy's worked it out. Everybody Radiant's is missing from every single lane. Attack. But Super, Sila, RTK, FY, they all show themselves in this bottom lane, and they're going to assume the Doombringer is just TP'd out, which he has. Yeah, that's a great trade for Vichy Gaming. Essentially, both looks were used Radiant's on both teams, and tower. it was Vichy that got a tier 1, Cloud9 got nothing. They're going to try to pressure the mid tower a little bit, but Dyer's middle I mean, the Dyer team just push way quicker, and they defend much better as well, thanks to Crypt Swarm. <laughs> For now, Aoi, he's actually reached the tier 1 tower on the top lane. It's kind of funny, he, he, he hit level 6 a long time ago, but there's been no more transition for him. He's been forced to rotate around and up to the VG. He's going for a very quick rush. But at the same time, I'm seeing a clockwork rock come down, so they're perfectly scattered out here by Bone 7. Really smart shit for that. And now ROTK getting bashed up by Roshan for helping him out. Fortified. He's a half life. He does have Ravage available, but C9 are happy with this. They're actually taking Dyer's trades off. T1 tower, tower on the bottom lane is going down. T1 tower on the top tower lane is fallen. almost dead as well. And if they can actually contest Roshan, they're all coming in. Bone 7, he's got a hook shot up and running. He's blocking up Roshan to the way. Then low, there's your ice pass. Where's your earth line? Roshan, oh, oh it is! And killed by the dive side. Look, we'll pick it up with the Scar and Mage Oliver. It's hurting VG Gaming badly. Bone 7 is so low and low, but he's still fighting it out. VG Gaming, they got the Aegis, he want to bring the Luna back to life again, but Sing Sing, he's going to turn back into Macro Pirate, he can't move in time, he burns in the fire and the flames. And now he 2000 still wants to keep fighting out here, but now the Eclipse from Sylar destroys one, destroys two, goes through the Doombringer, a double kill for
the Xyla. And now they might be getting a full genocide on Aoi, and there it is. Fenra dropping the Echo Slam with the Crypt Swarm and the Lucifer. More what than enough damage. Fight. I mean, if Bone7 hooked in a little bit sooner, and if he got the Aegis, that would have been a totally different fight. But the fact that Siler survived and dropped that Eclipse, now he's up to 2,000 gold. I think a BKB will be coming very soon. And it's not just the BKB on Silar, it's also the Blink Dagger that will be coming for Fenra. I think that is going to be the key item for Vici Game. If you could blow up the Meepo before he blows you up, suddenly the game is essentially over for Cloud9. Well, that said, though, Meepo did pick up Agonims, and that's going to make it much, much tankier for these upcoming fights. Should be watching top one right now. Pylite Eye as well as Bone 7. Hook shots coming off cooldown. You do have track available for Pylite Eye. So he's got to give a little bit of extra vision by tanking up a couple of guys. But with the Aghanim set to Meepo, we've got him arriving up on top lane, bottom lane, and inside of his own mid lane. So he's everywhere right now. And he'll be coming up to the top lane. That track on FY perfect. Bone 7 can't land this. Hook is coming up. And now there he goes. Hook up the Fenrir. Back to the star of Mage Oliver. And he can't even get the future off. The crew of the ult is out right now. The instance from Death Rock. But it's just Sing Sing. That's a lot of damage in the double earth fight. Over on Silent Envy. Dropping way too low for that back. He's got to keep it up for the fight for the moment. FY very low on life. Owie. Trying to finish him up with Bone 7 to boot. And then actually managed to get through four heroes from Beaching Gaming. About to come five. RTK. There's your proofing again. And the reverse team fight for Cloud9. The reason they win this fight is because there's no Ravage. There's yep. no Eclipse. And Cloud9 took that fight knowing that. And the track just gave them so much gold. If you look at the gold graph, it's going to be a spike upwards. Not including this tier 2. Cloud9 is right back into this game. But the next fight is going to determine a lot. Because that's going to be the fight where VG Gaming has their biggest tools. I just hope that VG Gaming was able to spend their gold. Because they just gained a lot and lost a lot. That they did. That they did. But hey, man, C9, it's still in their, it's, it's their decision when they go in. Clockwork, well, his initiation, alongside the amount of straight up damage that comes from the Meepo, once that Blink Dagger is also over on Sing Sing, it's going to come a lot faster and a lot harder against VG Gaming. But VG Gaming, it's all about the timing. When do they have Ravage? When do they have Eclipse? You said it before. C9 got on the upper hand of that fight because VG Gaming didn't have the big skills to pay the bills. They needed to be able to time this right. And at the same time, what, force C9 to come into them while these big ultis are up? Because C9 may, may just evade. Just split and evade. I think splitting and evade is a fine strategy for a Cloud9, but they gotta keep in mind they're working with a, some resemblance of a clock, right? Because not, not the hero clock, but the time clock. Because yes. if you look towards the late game, there's still a Luna, right? There's still a double Ravage. There's still a Death Prophet. So I feel that if this game go late enough, that's where Cloud9 will really struggle as well. Also, I don't think Cloud9 has one of those heroes such that if they win a fight, for example, you could break high ground, take two lanes of rash. You don't have something like Shadow Shaman. You don't have a hyper pusher. You just have more people kind of hitting the towers. I'm not sure that's enough. So I think Vici Gaming, they have a lot more room. Ooh, Pilot died. Oh, he came he can have dust. He said he's going to be there. Yep. Oh, he's dead. He heals him enough. He doesn't have him visible. And with, the, with both Crypt Storm as well as Lucifer Beam with the rest of the Vici Gaming, they do pick him off. It was the initial sentry ward that uh, was a little bit further down inside the jungle. The one to box up right there. That's yeah. the one that uh, revealed him out. They just held him in position. They realized where he would move and just held him there. So I think that Vichy Gaming has a lot more room for mistake because Cloud9 doesn't push that well. Whereas if Cloud9 loses one fight next to their towers, you can bet that tower and the next one is definitely going down. So Vichy Gaming, should they be able to move across to the other side of the map, I think that's where they really want to take these fights. Check out the item which we got over on Eternal Envy. He actually went for a Blink Dagger. Now this is a Blink Dagger 18 minutes into the game. We talk about having big was coming out from Vichy. He's got the potential to just remove it from Tide, uh, from Tide Hunter. So there will be no Ravage in the fight. As long as Eternal Envy can blink himself in and get that level 2 Doom off, there is no Ravage for the engagement. Yeah, I think the juiciest target right now is definitely Super, because if you Doom him up, you prevent a lot of what he can bring to the table. Yeah. Obviously, Luna getting her before she uses BKB and Clips is absolutely huge, but the problem with that is the cast time of Doom is so long. You blink in and suddenly they're casting your spells. So it, it's a it's a very aggressive item charge for, for Eternal Envy. There's a high upside, but I don't know. I feel like it's a very risky move.
Look at the movement coming up towards top lane. They're bringing everybody. All Mipos off the lanes. They're just soaking up the Avicii Gaming jungle, which is hilarious considering how much VG Gaming have put into this. They put down three sentry wards to either, well, one look for the hero and two look for the other wards that were coming out from C9. The aggressive ones that give the position nil. But they haven't actually spotted the main one, which is in the mid lane. It's right smack bang here in front of their tier three tower. And it's looking at every single rotation VG Gaming is doing. Meanwhile, they're in bottom lane. That's gonna be fun. Damage. He committed to kill a point seven back. When you caught that blade mail already over on this guy, they can't get the kill. The mech was even shared out there from Eternal Envy, and he blinked himself down, down into the lane and away to safety. After sealing the stack, there's only one big creep left in the stack, so big win for Cloud9 there, at least economically. The one thing that Cloud9 also have to be very concerned about is that once these defensive items start to get built up on Vichy Gaming, essentially Cloud9 has a big burst kind of damage, right? You have the Meepo proofing in, and then you have the Mystic Flare. But a single Yule Scepter, for example, or a single activation of BKB completely stops that. Yep. Essentially then, you have committed all your spells on a kill that you're not getting, and then you're fighting for the next 10 seconds without your big burst damage. That's where Cloud9 gets in trouble. They need to force kills, and they need to get them clean, crisp, and consistently. If they don't do that, Cloud9 will be losing these fights. So, as we approach this mid and late game, I just see VG Gaming has the better draft. They have the, uh, the draft that could make more mistakes Double and still win. Damage. So, I, I think Cloud9 is going to have a tough time coming into this mid and late game. See, for me, Dyer's man, I'm, be, I'm sitting on the other side of the fence of this one. I look at C9's draft and I go, you know what? Economy-wise, still, you're still running a Doombringer as well as a Bounty Hunter. You're still putting in a lot of money. As long as Pylai Dyer can actually get past, like, level 7 and get up to something more like level 11 and have the second level track. And you've still got a Meepo who can split push this game out. Lunar or no Lunar, Lunar can deal with it once it reaches her base. But until that point, you've just got C9 farming and farming and trying to basically suffocate VG Gaming on their own side of the map. So it's up to VG Gaming to come out and that's what C9 can fight. Bone 7? Okay, well, Silence a little bit off target. They've just put him up with a Yule Scepter, but that's all. And they've got five heroes here in the middle lane, while you're still running Eternal Lemby, who's actually blinked himself into a tree line in the bottom lane, he, which is He likes not, to do that. Yeah, but. yeah, he'll blink himself out now uh, and get that Devour off. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're farming everywhere across the map right now, and VG Gaming, they're forced to be a five-man team. They're not going to get the best advantage out from this one, and it's showing in the graphs. You're up to 4,000 experience, you're up to 3,000 gold, and it's this continuous rise coming the way of C9, where VG Gaming have every ulti apart from Echo Slam off cooldown. Yeah, it's really the age-old question when it comes to Dota. Like, one team fights better, but the other team split push better, and that's really what we're seeing here. Cloud9, well, I'm not sure what they take the fight, but they're definitely not taking the fights at all, choosing not to. Yeah. And they're farming for days, you know? They that's what a blink dagger on you comes to. If you're not looking to fight, that helps you run away. Obviously, it helps you get into the fight as well. There's that. This, this tower is the tower trade up too. T1 tower will go down on this bottom lane. They can't bring enough support Radiant's down here to stop it. So VG attack. Gaming, they just bring their own their Dyer's own power. Look at Sing Sing. He's also creep skipping it out. He's taken out Radiant's the creep wave. Wow. So this is the fallen. only creep wave VG Gaming have. There's Dyer's more momentum coming for C9 fallen. on the bottom lane. So if this just becomes a tier one and a tier two tower trade, top tower is under I'd still see C9 being happy with yeah, this one. Yeah, if you're going for a trade, it's because you don't have a pushing lineup. But actually, is that uh, Courier? Courier, no, no top lane. Yeah, Don't be there, Courier. Oh. The blink dagger is still there for Sing Sing, and he got it. The tier two tower will also take a fall on the bottom lane. This is so Dyer's much money coming the way of C9. Look at this. The creep wave's already pushed out. Oh, it looks like Bagram's gonna hook away. <laughs> It was the safer thing to do, man. It was the safer thing to do. They do not want to try and take any of these engagements. You got a crop ulti coming in at the end of Exorcism, sure. But you still just took a tier one and a tier two tower trade off, and you got a courier to boot. When did Cloud9 become this team that could execute such kind of strategy? Because two months ago and one month ago, they, they always take it to the late game. They, they don't play these type of style where you go for the lane and then you avoid fights. I guess avoiding fights is what they're really good at. And they're kind of just taking a, a different spin to the same style, but. Man, th this is a team which works harder than probably any European team out there. And they work so damn hard, and they know they came here to win C9, and you're not going to win... Uh, they came here to win TI4, and you're not going to win TI4 by just coming in and playing the same old strats, the same old the same old Dota. You need to be able to be flexible and be dynamic when you play in a, in a tournament like this. Yeah. And they're doing it beautifully. Or you could be newbie and run the same strat, and just beat everybody with the same strat, because you're just that good. <laughs> I think that's how Alliance won TI3 as well. But yeah, there, there is definitely uh, the fact that you could be versatile, you know, run the Drow Visage and run Meeple. 
a really different strategy, but they're definitely not out of the woods yet. I think I think Vichy Gaming, they're just looking for that one fight. Because it really, they just need one fight and just break the map completely open. And it's uh, up to C9 to deny that fight towards Vichy. Well, they're going to keep denying. He's going to blink that as well over on a bounty hunter. So we got a high maneuverable bounty hunter, able to get tracks and then just jump himself away. Or if he needs to, jump into the fight. It allows him to keep up with these high maneuverable here and mount RTK and now he trying to hide the tree lines, but it will not work. A nice pick off here from BG Gaming, but they commit BKB from Super, Exorcism, Ravage. They didn't have to use the Eclipse, but the Macro Pirate was also used. And they'll try and take a very, very quick Roshan. The Meepo C9, they are not going to give BG Gaming the space to be oh. in that work. Hawks up, they want a perfect hop, but he's actually pushed RTK out of this fight. But it's isolated Sila, who now lets the Eclipse go. Super coming in here, Envy. He's just going to cast a new more Sila and tank this up. There's the only thing he really can do. He's actually going to live through all of this. Super, the last attack is not enough. 39 by the way, he'll deny by his part. Trying to fight straight for the Earth, but he's catching through RTK. He's through all the lines, he's coming to Rizzi. He goes in suicidally oh. in. Meepo just proves it out. And now Fenrir. There's another Earthmine coming off cooldown. One second, Sing Sing blinking in. The proofs are coming with the four stuff out. Allowing Ben to have a little bit more space. And another Earthmine coming out from Sing Sing. All proofs, so all Earthmines. Macrofire down. He's got to get his knee frozen out of here, but Totem Storm slowed him down a little bit. Get out of the fire, man. Over to FY, another Earthmine. They're just controlling VG. Going one, going two, going three, going four, going five down for VG Gaming. The Doombringer coming in for that one. Envy, he actually survived through all that greatly too and brought his aura back and now they can go in and try and take Roshan. If they take this Roshan, there will be such a huge leak because that's where Vichy is supposed to win. They're supposed to win these fights. The buybacks are coming out. There's one buyback, but they don't have these ultimates. Slimark does not have RTK. a clip. RTK shuts in. Smith is going to come down. RTK down about happy to be. But the Eternal Envy now needs to run. C6 back. Get out. He's got the Aegis. Get out. He's got the Aegis. He does. Well, RTK. TK, he may go down there because he's in three corners. A little bit further back, hook shot in on that fly. They're going in with the track kills also coming out. They got Lemon Crop on the out, Bone Seven. He's closing with Super and Super's killing himself. The Blade Mail is not helping him out right now. Bone Seven needs to look in space. In comes Sing Sing again, moving it up. Super, the Earth Fight not catching much on the BKB. RTK trying to take away the damage for the Anchor Smash. And Sing Sing, Meepo is dropping low for Super. Also low, he's got enough. Sing Sing will go down here. Highlight eye, there's nothing left to give. Triple kill for Super. Able to stand with his full exorcism out. And they're looking for more. The Gush going on to Eternal Envy. He'll have himself an illusion room, but that's not going to help him. He let the illusion room go. Yours have to fidget it down. All of C9 counter wiped here by VG Gaming. And Roshan, well, he still was claimed. Keep in mind that there's no more buyback on Meepo, so shit Clown or Vichy decides to push Cloud9's tower, there's nothing Cloud9 could do about it. That was such a bad fight for, for Cloud9 to take. They took the entire fight with Super activated BKB, that's where Mystic Flare does nothing, that's where the Blame Out the Clockwork does nothing. Meepo spent all of his proofs on the BKB uh, crop list or Death Profit, and that did nothing. Oh! And the comes. oh, he wants to come in! Oh! One before, and they blow him up! There goes that push, never mind the push! That BKB from Bone 7 came out just the right time. They're keeping the tracks up, and now he's trying to catch up to somebody here. But it's not wise when that Ravage is still available. And they don't have Meepo just yet. RTK actually blinking back in for a gush on Pilot Eye. A little bit more of a scary move there in the mid lane. But a good pick off coming back to life again. Able to stop the Earthshaker and hold on to your own tier 2 tower. What a tense game. It's, it's getting them. <laughs> so, as, as the BKBs are important for Vichy Gaming, we also have to keep track of their timer, the duration, right? Because once it gets mm -hmm. to the four or five second mark, you can see that it takes a long time to kill these meeples. They're just very tanky. Granted, it's that gonna get harder too. Like, he's already got the Reaver and he's on into the ultimate orb. He's just full, full stat pad, and the Scotty's not far off. Well, I mean, he had an Aegis in that fight. I think that's the only reason why Sing Sing was able to stay there for a long time. Yeah. So, in the upcoming team fights, assuming that he doesn't have Aegis, you know, these BKBs, if they are staying at the eight and second second durations, I think VG Gaming could focus and burst down. But if they're, if they're down to five and four, Sing Sing will survive that. He will then burst you down, and that's where VG will get in trouble. But the way I'm seeing it, the defensive items are really overwhelming Sing Sing's damage output. We have multiple four staff, we have multiple BKBs, we have mech, and then, you know, the second Ravage will be coming eventually from ROTK. 
And I, again, I, I very much so feel that Meepo is not a hero that's capable of dealing with all of that. There's also another problem coming the way here of VG game uh, of uh, C9. They're losing vision across the map. They just lost their two observer wards. A gem purchased by ROTK and carried by Super is now watching the movements. And this is already going to be flagged. Like they got rid of a ward, but it means the pilot die has to be very, very careful about his movements too. He also realized you're setting up beneath the sentry ward in the middle lane, which wasn't the greatest thing in the world. But the range group attacked him, so he backed up. And now Super walks high ground, and he has to blink and force start himself away to safety. And I'm hearing, well, BKBs. Uh oh. That was meant to be a Shiva's guard trigger. Well, importance of BKB. <laughs> it's down to seven seconds. Maybe he just likes a lower cooldown. <laughs> no, I don't think that's part of the plan. <laughs> it's just, uh. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Man. Yeah, the key item here for Vici is the fact that they have a gem roaming around, and uh, they have it, in my opinion, on the best person. Because Super is really out of all of Vici's gaming's heroes, and should he see a Bounty Hunter, in theory, he could use him up, but, you know, Bounty also has a Blink Dagger, so it's kind of like an elaborate dance of, can Bounty get his track off and Blink away? Can he just start, or continue being that annoyance that he constantly is? And meanwhile, you know, back to what you were saying 10 minutes ago, it's Clown9 farming away. Yeah. They just keep the side lanes out. Lilai die, nice little track on Super. He makes it to the Yulzy himself. Just to get, yeah, there it goes. Gets rid of the uh, track straight away. Also, Aoi 2000 is in one of the most unusual positions I've seen in a while. Oh, he's hi. just sitting up there. Pilot, hi. Uh, he's closed, but he's got Blink and Force Stop. He's going to be okay. He knows Bone Seven can also make some space, but I, I'm wondering if Aoi is just waiting for the second coming right now. He's there in the tree lines, and he's just he's he's waiting for the the right time on the top lane. It makes a lot of sense to do this as a shaman of shaman because you can backstab the towers, but I mean... Yeah, I, I'm okay. not quite sure what he wants to do. He, if he wants to try and solo with Shakira or... I mean, no, 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 he's really not looking for the fights. He's avoiding them. Like, as soon as he sees the heroes going back mid, for example, that's when he'll pop out the trees and start farming this wave. Well, I guess when you don't have alliance in TI4, you just need some other team to fill the rat hole. Wow, 9 is doing that very well. Uh, I finally get a track on, which cannot be dispelled, but Owie force starts himself away from ROTK. And they have the track mobility, so he's running away at least. Oh, the Yules, he's there. He does up everything, but he never gets it off. Ice Path will go, and, uh, well, he'll be left for dead by uh, Pylite Eye. But in the meantime, you've still got five heroes from BG Gaming hunting a Skyrath. Yeah, and actually, if we want to sit down and work out the map, I don't think that's actually worth it for, clown, uh, for VG Gaming to get a kill on a support, because as you're spending five heroes roaming the map to get a support kill, you have four or five of Cloud Nine's heroes farming. Yep. The map doesn't work out in your favor. You're even gonna have like Eternal Envy. I don't know if there's gonna be a Soul Curious or a Shiva's guard coming out from him, but you're gonna be uh, pumping a lot more money inside of him. Bounty is still leeching a little bit of experience too and keeping this track up. It's mainly his job to keep the vision up, so Sing Sing knows where he can move. And Sing Sing now has 3.8k gold. That's that's your Scotty right there. It's no buyback, but it's Scotty. I mean, we also can't really forget about Silar because slowly he has been, you know, working on some big items. He hasn't been dying much since the team fights hasn't been happening, and he's got the, you know, he's got the farm, he's got the Midas, so. And here he comes to use it to so the tier two town in the bottom lane. So now C9 have a decision to make. VG Gaming, do they try and stop the push and hold on to their tier 2 tower? Or do they try and go for some level of prey? I'm seeing a lot of Meepos moving towards the top lane they're with Envy, with Aoi. I'm gonna find they're gonna try and push the tier 3 tower now and force VG Gaming to respond to them. Looks like VG Gaming is expecting a backstab. They're very afraid to actually go up to that tier 2. They're not committing exorcism. At least they are able to do it now. Uh, in. Meepo, oh. he's gonna get dumped! Next room set, there's all the TV from his team. Oh, bad back and he's gonna die. Meepo on the back line here. Double BKB is activated. Meepo buys back. He wants to come in this fight. How yep. quickly can they retreat? It's gonna be Shiva from Envy. He doomed Silar and it's all up to them to save Silar. Meepo is gonna find FY. He's gonna be dead. How much more can he get? Clockwork! He finds Super and he yields up the sense of up. He's gonna survive for a little longer and he gets blown up. Rabbit comes in and Super is gonna go back. Finish him! No, the ghost will not come back. They're gonna try to get ROTK. He finally makes it back home. Ooh. Man, Cloud9, it's again, a buyback. These guys love doing this kind of stuff. It used to be like Eternal Envy who was the man who had to do it, but in this game is Sing Sing. You know what you can give away. Okay, Sing Sing, he got King straight away, but you realize, okay, what's on the sidelines?
couple of abilities. Let's go in. Let's go fight. We think we can get the upper hand. And now with four heroes on the sideline, the Urshik is coming up, Dyer's but there's no big echoes. Yeah, he's 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 gonna make, he's, they're going to force the lead and the jump in already. Fenrir tracks down. Jeeva's got it up. There's a lot of damage. Fenrir, Hodemstop, and the Fisher. He's not going to die of this one. The Scorchers were ticking him down. He's going to safety. In the meantime, they've ravaged the tier 3 tower. There's your double buyback. And now they force BG Gaming to waste their money. Falling back, Concussive Shot means ROTK cannot follow. And Cloud9 are the first team to damage inside the base in the Tier 3 tower. You know, if you ask me who's going to get the first racks or first Tier 3 tower at the end of the draft, no questions asked, Vichy gave me, but Cloud9 has shaped the game in a such a way that it's, it's not about the fights. Well, it really is, but it's about taking the fights smartly next to your Tier 2 where you're buyback and, and can get back to the fight immediately. Also, you got to keep in mind that Bounty Hunter, he's the in mobile war, but his tracking, he is earning so much gold for Cloud9. Mm -hmm. We're seeing about a 10,000 gold lead against a Luna, against a Death Prophet. These heroes normally farm so much better than any other heroes in the game, but... Okay, I was going to point it out for Pile I Die, if he doesn't actually see this one. Uh, there is a gem on the ground, which he keeps walking past on the bottom lane. I don't know if he's just not coming in range of it. I think if the crowd yells louder, he might hear it. <laughs> maybe, maybe. He's already got one gem, so maybe he just doesn't want to get too much blood on him. That, yeah. that weighs you down as a bounty hunter. How can you be stealthy if you're carrying around I mean, multiple gems? You, you gotta have enough blings to open up like a jewelry shop, right? Like, just get two gems, a couple of rings. And there you go, man. I realize I hit my peel until back to Dota 2. Well. Highlight Eye, nice little track over on FY, and now FY is forced to use Sentry Wards to try and scout out this Bounty Hunter. This is not the most efficient way of doing this, and he knows it as well. So something slight to talk about with Bounty Hunter's track is, we see this red marker, for example, on top of Shakira right now. Yep. The enemy will not see it. They will only see it on their own little portrait uh, on the bottom left. And if you're Bounty Hunter and you're tracking from high ground like, like how he just did, the enemy will not see that marker on top of you. So you gotta, if you're playing against Bounty Hunter, you have to pay very close attention to your hero portrait and, and those little markings and make sure you're not tracked. For example, track and then trying to smoke is a big no-no. And if you stay FY, it's dropping that smoke and dropping on the courier. Maybe the way out of the track, maybe they'll just smoke without but a hero. Considering he's sitting inside of his own base. Exactly. Like, all of these like, are small benefits that you don't see on the scoreboard, but it matters so much. Especially when you're playing this kind of rat Dota, you just want as much vision as oh, possible. Wait. Pilot Eye found the gem. Pilot Eye found the gem. Okay. Congratulations, Pilot Eye. The little Easter egg that's there, and you leave the Observer one behind. Critical moment of the game. <laughs> Uh, something that you also talk about, Sing Sing. Normally, he goes in for the Scardi. Yes. He actually went in straight for the disabled before that point. So he hasn't finished up the heart just yet. Obviously, you don't gain any, any uh, bonus line points for your first because it doesn't shear out that way. So he actually went for the side device. So he's looking for more disable and control. Um, they may need him to go and try and contest it. I don't think it's seen under anywhere near Rashad. Yeah, like, Pilar is looking at it, but he can't stop it. And Fender is in perfect position for the jump. Just up, especially against Luna, is definitely a big problem. The idea behind the hex is such that you could hex the BKB heroes before they activate the BKB and get a clean kill. But doing that now against the Luna with Aegis just became that much harder. Because, I mean, you could technically do that against it. Yep. But she'll come back alive and, and activate her BKB. So I think that, that Aegis meant much more than the first two Aegis combined. Yep. Uh, especially now that Vichy Gaming are pumping out so much more damage. We're almost looking at a completed butterfly on Silar if you give him a little bit more time to farm. I'm, I'm now starting to come to your part of the court here and wonder, like, what do you do in this late game up, for, up against a fully stacked Luna? Especially when that fully stacked Luna is going to be done by about 40, uh, 45 minutes, 50 minutes into this game. You're going to need a lot more Pilot. to fight with. And yeah, Pilot Eye coming in very close. He doesn't know if there's entries. He doesn't know if there's going to be a fresh gem over there. Should also note, too, that was a third Roshan, so super. Not only does he have the extra life points that can come in from Exorcism, That's he's also carrying the cheese, the cheese around yeah. on the Death Prophet. So this is going to be a real critical thing for him coming into the engagement. And Z9, I almost feel right now, if they want to try and win this game and keep their TI4 hopes alive, they've got to win on the decision game. The late game decision-making game. If they can do that, then it could be looking really damn good. 
the decision game as well as having some actual physical right click damage because when the BKBs are being popped, that's where we really have to rely on. Oh, Pilot Eye, gotta be really careful. He's underneath the sentry ward, blinks away on the edge of the Shiva's guard. They're super unable to hold him there. And someone's really gotta take that DD rune in the bottom river. Maybe that's one way to stop it. Just give a DD rune over to Meepo. There's your damage required. Looks like Super is gonna thatch that one up. Yeah, not the greatest thing for him. It's an okay thing. With Sing Sing again, back up to that top lane. He's at 4,000 gold now. His, uh, his CS, about a crack 400. He's moving up there. He's, he's basically going at least like 10, 10 CS, uh, like, what was that, a minute? Well, as, a, as an average, but up to 21,000 on the net worth. VG Gaming is trying to keep these lanes pushed out, and C9 will continue to evade them. That's all they've really got to do, but it's not really working for them now. The, the, the uh, experience is starting to drop. VG Gaming getting a little bit more advantage on that one. But of course, in this game, if C9 are able to take one Rax, then that makes the world a difference for them, because their Meepo is just so much free, uh, so much free to move around the map and do what he wants. Oh, Doom, let's get out of there. Yeah, he's blinking and scorched Earth. Any movement speed he's got to get himself away from Super. I mean, it's it's very interesting to talk about the, like, for example, Meepo has the highest number, but Doom is the next one highest. And if, in fact, if you want to look at the gold graph, it's a 12,000 gold lead for, for Cloud9, but here's the question, Toby, does any of that matter? No. I don't think it matters as much as normal game. It, to me, it matters where the fight happens, how the fight results, and honestly, it, it doesn't matter if there's a 12k go lead or, or 2k go lead. If Vichy wins a fight, your base is gone. Yeah. I'm not going to debate that one, man. I'm definitely not going to debate that one. So Cloud9 is definitely extending the game. That has been the game plan for a while, but what exactly are they extending it to? They're, they're coming now. They're coming now. They've, they've finished the butterfly. They're feeling good to go. There's no refresh for fully on RNGK, but they just trigger Super Zombie. She run them early. This onto a tier 2 tower. While fortification is still available, which is it going to be used by C9? They hold on to it. Radiance they don't let it go. The Rax is more important to them. They'll let the tier 2 tower fly. Considering Super Zoldi was popped that early, I'm surprised they didn't just use it and delay them up a little bit. No, I think what he wanted to do is get the tower for free, get the refresh orb completed uh, on ROTK, and then you go for the push. And you can see the recipe is now on the courier and it's about to deliver. So. We've actually got double double refresher orbs right now. We've got a refresher orb over on the Tidehunter. The second refresher orb belongs to the Doombringer. Yep. So Eternal Envy almost has enough money to fully finish that. In fact, the courier is already making his way up. So he's gonna he's gonna sacrifice his own buyback to make sure he can do about two targets at the start of the fight. And technically, he could take the he could take out both the Death Prophet as well as the Titan before the game even begins. I just love these long games, more so because there's just so much at stake. One mistake will decide it all, and really, I think these games really determine which are the team that's most poised and not likely to crack. Traditionally, it's it's been the teams from China, your IGs, your LGDs, your VGs, your DKs, that just play so well in the late game, but Wild 9, they, they live off of these long games, so there, there's a game for them as well. We'll see who's gonna make that first mistake. That we will. Right now, VG Gaming thought they might have had a moment. This Observe Ward they've got up on top of the cliff inside their Diocide jungle. This guy right, well, yeah, that guy. Uh, it's, it was watching fairly closely. Pile I die is moving away. Super's got this gem back on him. This one purchased up by Fenrir. Well, he was trying to look out for that bounty counter, but they're just chasing shadows most of the time now. Like, it seems like VG Gaming, sometimes we group up, they get themselves like the tower, they get themselves Roshan, they find themselves maybe a pick off here or there, and then we move ourselves back to split push kind of thing. It's uh, We just bounce from one game, the one gameplay to the next, but VG Gaming, they, they just had enough. We're coming back down middle lane again, all five players, the X is back off cooldown, they still have Vegas. They still have uh -oh. G, but Aegis only has 30 seconds, but Pylon Knight, four staff down, RTK gonna be on the tail end of here. Pylon Knight will turn for one last track, but he will die outside the base. He's, he's not the critical hero, however. He's got buyback if he wants to use it. He does. But while the track is there, he's kind of still got the bonus of Alvon Super. Well, there goes your Radiance ultimate. Remember, the cliff was safe from before, attack. so it will be used now. Radiance Where's the extra help coming? The Earth Mine has really, really long range there by Sing Sing, but he does not want to jump into this lineup. The Aegis he wants to reclaim in one second Radiance time, and there goes your Aegis. So it's only cheese available for the fight, but VG Gaming have Radiance already done the damage. Mass. They take the range racks, and those bouncing glaives are destroying the melee racks, and because Sing Sing, he can't really give when he's getting Radiance dumped by those glaives. And they want to fight. Oh, Trigger the beat. 
Okay, Billy Clark works. Big hook in. He's managed to stop that flying here. Hex up. They move over towards Zyla. Zyla's gone too. They let the mid ranks go so they can get this. RTK blink up from Eternal Envy. He doesn't have the secondary do, but RTK goes down. Ben Rimble team be out. Super on the run. He's got cheese available, but he won't want to use it for this one. Or will he? He's still running away from this one. Earthworm won't reach him. But there's your blink from Envy. Gets the kill, drops the jet. They must get a counteract. The bottom lane is actually pushing out right now. Fenrir is, is trying to stop the push. The range rack is almost down. But this is a ticket to take tier 2 tower in the middle lane and maybe just push in and take the bottom racks. Silas defending. If they kill him off right now, Envy's very much in the front lane. Oh, oh God! All the way in. The Skyrim by Dom and Sila. They got to bring him down. Howie, you are important. He gets the kill on Luna. Moves over your scepter. Protect the super. He's still inside the cold super. The cheese will pop and he's just a buyback. It's a death back right now. He's on the sidelines. The bottom rack is going to cloud nine. And maybe even more if they can rotate towards the middle lane. They have their army on P4 to force him down. And the tier three tower, where else do they go? Pylite die. He's looking to get the early track. PG Gaming makes his way back out again. There's your tier two tower gone to the middle lane. This opens up the mid racks. They're going for tier three. It's never doubt the tenacity of Cloud9. I believe the base of PG Gaming is crumbling. The Meepos are pushing so quick. Oh, tier three is going down. The racks are going down. Where's your Ravage? He can't do it. Bone Seven's got the cogs. He is keeping PG inside the fountain. Solo here is the clockwork. The mid nearly rack is gone. The mid-range rack is now also almost toast. The top rack is going. They're getting cut from all sides while they're killing him inside the base. C9, they got BG completely and utterly choked out. Bone 7, he'll actually survive through this. It's more rack, it's Magus. C9, I think they've done it. Eternal MB is still running himself away here from BG Gaming. And they're going to bag themselves up, but it's Mega Crease up against BG Gaming. 45 minutes into this game with everything on the line for C9. How do they do it? Patience. They, they're not supposed to win the stage of the game. The funny thing is, though, man, it still feels like it's the it's the noble sacrifice. It's the, oh, I'm dead. Come in and BG Gaming, they, they take the invitation. They walk right into C9 and go, okay, we've got ourselves a good fight. Buybacks come and they can't retreat in time. You've got Meepos who are able to jump themselves all across the map, especially now with the BTs over on the Meepo. He's going anywhere he wants to on this map. Even Alley 2000, I can't believe he's the one to actually get that kill on the bottom lane. This guy's got a BKB 4 star Ghost Scepter now. It's actually very difficult to kill off the Sky Wrath range. And all of this was done with extra track gold. They hit 22,000 gold advantage right now and push up around the 8,000 network. VG Gaming, they're going all in, but look on the bottom lane. You've got Sing Sing pushing in, looking for the tier 4 towers. There's the GG push coming out here from VG Gaming. One They've hole. got to go for the tier 4 towers. Now, fortification available for VG Gaming. And as far as uh, C9 don't, they don't actually have fortification. Now, do they go for the racks? Or do they go for they the tier one 4? Hole. Just hold. Oh, oh, shot. Misses his hook. Hold 7. He's running himself in. He's getting towers. shredded apart. He does have buyback. They're not doing the out. job, though. They're not going for the towers. Back inside the dive base. They're already through one of the tier fours. Sarala. Now he goes in. Envy. Hooks off this. Sarala. The Ravage will go. But the Hammer Spears of the Fortress is the dire side. Half-Life. 1,500. It's over. C9 will win. And force out the deciding game. Game number three. Who will be eliminated and who advances to the lower bracket first final? Cloud9 keep themselves in it with the Meepo pick in 46 minutes and 45 seconds.